If you have followed Taylor Swift at all along her journey, you've likely seen or heard her new song, Karma, that has been released. And I'm here to tell you that if you are a Christian and you have been a, a Swifty your whole life or however long, if that song, Karma, was not the straw that broke the camel's back, it should be, okay? This song is totally demonic and it has nothing to do, we shouldn't be entertaining any of the messaging of that song into our spirits. And if you are watching this and you are a big Taylor Swift fan but you don't know the Lord and you think that this is just a Taylor Swift hate video, it's not, I promise. This, this specific message is for Christians. Um, but I also hope, I think you will get a lot out of this as well because I'm not hating on Taylor. I love her as a human being. God created her. God loves her. And I pray that she will totally come into the knowledge and revelation of who Jesus Christ is because I know some of you are thinking, you can't say that all of her music is demonic and all of this stuff because Taylor is a Christian. Well, not everybody who says that they're a Christian is actually a Christian. And we know that because of the fruit of their life. Galatians 5.24 says, And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. And so much of what Taylor Swift does is very fleshly. We're going to come, um, we're going to go into all of that. So much scripture just because of this one song. Um, and of course, there's other things too that all point to this fact. But God only knows whether or not she's truly going to heaven or not. But we can look at her life and say, don't go down the path that she's going. Don't follow her. Um, if you are a Christian and you want to, to go to heaven, you want to do the things that please Jesus, not the things that grieve the Holy Spirit. Um, because here's why. Proverbs 25, 26 says, When a lover of God gives in and compromises with wickedness, it can be compared to contaminating a stream with sewage or polluting a fountain. So again, I believe by looking at the fruit of Taylor's life, we can see that she clearly doesn't love God. And that's not the point of this video, but I just got to get this out of the way because I know that so many people are going to say, Taylor is a Christian, so everything that Tracy says, throw out the window. That's not the case. We're not going to talk about that, but we'll, I'm just going to say this. Whether or not she believes in Jesus, even if she is, but she's compromising right now. So even if she loves God or she thinks that she's a Christian, Everything that she's doing is a compromise to the messaging that Jesus presents. And so it's a contaminated stream. It's a contaminated fountain. And if you are going and receiving from that fountain, you're drinking that sewage. And it's going to pollute your life, whether you believe it or not. You may not make the connection of, oh, this is happening in my life, this terrible thing or you know, I'm irritable all the time or I have strife in my life or I'm just angry with my spouse all the time or my kids all the time. You may not m connect it to the fact that you're listening to contaminated music. You're listening to messaging that is of the world that is not from God and it's actually affecting your everyday life. But, and, and this is what I'm trying to get you to grasp is that there is a connection to what you drink from what you're listening to, and the, and the outpouring into your life. There is a connection. So just know that as we move forward. So let's start here. The song is called Karma. Okay, Karma is a, is a Hindu and a Buddhist belief that says that your actions determine the good and the bad that happens to you in this life and the afterlife. Because often karma is associated with reincarnation. Um, which, of course, we don't believe in the Christian faith that you don't, you don't get reincarnated. You go to heaven or you go to hell after you die. Um, so karma tells you that you get what you deserve in this life. And that's the message that Taylor's song is sending. You get what you deserve. She's saying that she's happy with karma. She's comfortable with karma because she believes that she has walked uprightly and maybe she has okay we we know that all of, all that stuff that goes down in hollywood and and in the pop culture life that it's horrible that people have probably treated her unfairly and so she is lashing back out 
through her music and saying that she's comfortable because she knows that she has kept her walk um, good. And that and that's great if she has treated people kind and fair. And I'm not saying Taylor is a bad person at all. That is not the message of this video. Again, this is what is the message of this song and how this song, how how Satan is using her to send this message out. And it's a it's a lie. And so karma is getting what you deserve. But in Christianity and the message that we need to have in our hearts and our spirits and the message that we should be telling other people in Christianity, you don't get what you deserve. Jesus got what you deserve. And so to to twist that message, even just that slightest bit is catastrophic to what people believe about their lives. They think if I can just be good and I can keep my side of the street clean, like Taylor says, then then I can walk comfortably and, and everybody else um, gets what they deserve. And that's, and that's not how it works. That's not why you go to heaven. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. And that's the message. We're, we're all equal in that regard in that we have all fallen short. And so that's the message that people need to know. So karma says, don't trust in Christ. You have to do good. But scripture, just like I just said, says no one is good. We have all fallen short. Sin separates us from God and we all deserve hell for sinning before a holy God. So again, if Taylor is a Christian and loves Jesus, this is the message that she should be sending people. So this is another clue of why we can't, we can't listen to that. We can't follow in that. We can't enjoy that music and, and receive it because it's a lie from the pit of hell. And we don't want people falling into that trap. So it's also a perversion of God's law that he has set in place of sowing and reaping. But God is the one who is in charge of that, not the universe, not karma. So the other overarching idea that comes across in this video or in this song is that Taylor is rejoicing in the fact that her enemy has it coming to him or her. Okay, and so as Christians, again, we're told to love our enemies. The Bible says, uh, you know, Jesus on the mountain, he said, but I say to you, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. That is the mindset that we should have in Proverbs 24, 17. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls and let not your heart be glad when he stumbles. That's what we need to have in our minds and in our hearts and anything else is a message of Satan. This song has profanity in it. Ephesians 4, 29, do not let unwholesome, which means foul, profane, worthless, vulgar, words ever come out of your mouth, but only speech as is good for building up others. That is what we strive for. That is the goal. And this song tears down and it has vile language in it. And she also brings in ice spice, you guys. <laughs> If you are a Christian and you're watching this stuff, you're watching Ice Spice come in, the, the woman rapper, she's on tour with Taylor, she's in the music video, it's so sexualized. If you know anything about Ice Spice, you, I hope you don't because you love God and you run away from all this stuff. The only reason that I have, have seen this is because I am a watchman and I'm trying to warn you against this stuff because some of you have been blinded to it. You don't realize that this is evil. So I'm not watching this for enjoyment, but I'm doing what the Lord has told me to do, which is to expose the works of darkness. And so... I pray, I pray, I pray that Ice Spice finds the Lord and that she is saved because her, her life, her messaging, all of it is so demonic, you guys. And so just the fact that Taylor is associated with her should be a huge red flag to all of us that this is not something, no more. We cannot be involved in this. We cannot be drinking from the fountain of Taylor Swift, essentially, okay? So 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. So just the fact that they are working together, and I, again, this is not hating on her as a person, but she is deceived. They're both deceived, and I love them, and I pray that they find the Lord. But this isn't something that Christians should be associated with at all, at all. 
So something that I noticed almost immediately was that the music is so happy sounding. This whole song is is a terrible teardown of of her enemy and the music, everything about it sounds light and happy and fun and upbeat and innocent and it just reminds me so much of how Satan comes as an angel of light. He doesn't come all the time. I mean, we could think of thousands of songs that are, you would listen to it and say immediately, oh, I know that's demonic. But this is like super under the radar if you were just listening without really hearing because the music doesn't necessarily match the tone of the messaging. So I'm not saying that Taylor is the devil or that Taylor is a demon. I'm saying that Taylor is being influenced by demons. This is this is a classic work of the devil to disguise something that seems okay or and is maybe even seems like a brilliant piece of work of art, but just because it's brilliant, just because it's genius, just because it's well done because Taylor is gifted. She has been given gifts from the Lord and gifts, the Bible says that gifts are without repentance. So God will gift a person. He doesn't take it back just because you're not using it for his glory. He will let you keep that gift because it's without repentance. But what I am saying is that Satan will come and try to pervert that gift and use it for his own glory, which is exactly what we're seeing. And I'm, I'm not fighting against Taylor. I'm not saying Taylor is a terrible person because Ephesians 6 12 is we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. That tells us that our battle is between demonic spirits. It's not with human beings. Okay, so it's with the with the spirits that are influencing them. So one of the opening scenes in the music video is Taylor dressed up like Nemesis, who is the Greek goddess of divine retribution and revenge. So already we're getting into like idolatry, okay? And I know, I know that people are going to say that is so extreme and it's just, again, a work of art and and it's going too far, but it's not because the moment that you start crossing over into I'm pretending like I'm a goddess. That is an influence of the enemy because the the Greek gods, all of those in scripture, um, all of the idols that they talked about, like in Egypt, all of those, all of those gods are demons. They have personalities. They have agendas. They have their own jobs. And so this specific demon that she's talking about or singing about is karma. And what is so fascinating to me is that she's literally saying, karma is my boyfriend, karma is a god. She's singing about the demon who is influencing her. She has no idea. I guarantee she has, maybe she does. I'm not going to say that she doesn't because maybe she does know. But to the average person, the average person doesn't know. But she's singing about this and, and I'm, here's the thing, you guys. Karma is the name of a demon that I have cast out of somebody. Karma actually, so she's not telling a lie. When she says karma is a god, she's not kidding. It's a lower G god, which is a demon. And I've cast the demon, I've cast that demon out of somebody before. And, and I didn't just make it up, okay? This was something that when I was praying before I went into um, praying over this woman. I was talking with the Lord and he actually told me the name of this demon. I had no idea that it was the name of a demon. Okay. But it was, and it was a witchcraft spirit that this person, this lady, she had received some witchcraft items, some new age items like crystals and, and different things from a friend. And she didn't want to hurt her friend by rejecting the items and so she kept them in her house. She wasn't using them. She wasn't, she wasn't doing any witchcraft. So all these people who say that intention matters, you know, I do yoga, but I don't, I don't worship any false gods or I pray to Jesus while I'm doing yoga. And I'm sorry, this video is not about yoga and I'll get, I'll do another video on that at another time. But God does not receive certain kinds of worship. If you go to a pagan god's temple 
and and you say, well, I'm not here. I just want, I wanted to go with my friend because they invited me and I didn't want to be rude, but I was praying to Jesus the whole time. I wasn't, unless the Holy Spirit specifically told you to go there and do that, God does not receive that kind of worship. And so intention doesn't necessarily matter. This friend kept the items because here's the thing. God's word tells us to destroy the works of witchcraft, to have nothing to do with witchcraft. So just by you receiving them doesn't matter your intention, you're being disobedient because you didn't destroy the items. And so that was a demon that I cast out of somebody. It was a witchcraft spirit, which is ironic because of all the witchcraft stuff surrounding Taylor Swift, which again, I'm probably going to have to do another video on because that's not exactly what I'm dealing with today. Um, but we, you have heard probably all of the articles that have come out about people going to her concerts and then having amnesia, literally not being able to remember what happened in, at the concerts. And that's not normal. I don't care. The science that they, that they say is the reasoning behind it is like, it's bogus. They can't, it only happened to her concerts and who else? Beyonce's concerts. Both women who have exposed themselves by the things that they say, by the things that they do as, as doing witchcraft. So that is not coincidental, okay? So if you are a Christian and you are entertaining this, you're listening to this for enjoyment, you're going to the concerts, you're watching the music videos, and you see nothing wrong, let me tell you precisely through the word of God why this is wrong, okay? Romans 8, 6 through 8 for to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. So how do we know? It's pretty obvious, but how do we know for sure that this song, that her music, that her dancing, that her shows are fleshly or demonic? The Bible tells us exactly how we know. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality. If you have seen the dancing, if you have seen any of the videos of her shows, if you have been to the shows, you know. If you have seen Ice Spice, you know. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality. All of it is sensual, which is a work of the flesh. Idolatry. Dressing up and, and speaking out as if you are a goddess. Idolatry, sorcery, we just covered that with the witchcraft, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. The Bible continues, I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you are moving towards these things, whether you are Taylor Swift, who is actually performing it, or whether you are moving towards it in the sense that you are listening to it, you're entertaining it in your home or in your thoughts or in your, um, in your mind by listening, then you are actively choosing to move away from the things of God and move towards the things of the enemy. So here it is. If you are a Christian, and I keep saying that if you are a Christian, because I know so many of you may be watching and you and you aren't a Christian, and I pray that you that you receive Jesus and have a revelation because even if you're not a Christian, if you move away from those things, away from the things I just listed in Galatians 5, it will it will actually benefit you. You will come out from the curse of sin which sin causes torment in your life. It will cause the depression. It will cause the sickness in your body. It will cause all of these things. All of it is rooted in sin. And so if you move towards Jesus, then you're moving towards the blessing of God and the protection and the health and all of the things that God provides for his children. And so the, the big thing here that I'm trying to get across to believers who want to live their life for Jesus is that you cannot partner with this. You cannot be a Taylor Swift fan anymore because she is, the message that she is sending is not a godly message and it is actually the opposite and it's causing people to fall into sin. So we have to live by the Spirit not by the flesh, 
And the only way to not live by the flesh is by not entertaining the flesh. So Romans 8, 5 says, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. So how do you know if you are walking by the spirit or if you're walking by the flesh? Well, if you're walking by the flesh, you will set your mind on the things of the flesh. So the songs that are fleshly, you set your mind on that by listening to it, by engaging with it, by speaking it, which is a whole nother dangerous thing to do, but that's again another video. You will set your mind on the things of the flesh. 1 Peter 2.11, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. So I'm trying to get you to see that as Christians, we are told literally to reject these things, to abstain from these things that we don't go to the world for our, the sinful, the things of this world that are sinful for enjoyment. Okay, so you have to be active in resisting. Part of our job as Christians is to resist and expose the wickedness of this stuff, the, the sexual dancing, the sensuality of it all, all of that that tempts us into sin, we are to abstain from it. So it's not something that you can say is okay. Colossians 3, 5 says, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So all of those things we are to put to death not sing about, okay? It's our job to put them to death. God is not going to come down off of his throne and put them to death for you. He already did everything that he had to do by Jesus dying on the cross and then giving us the Holy Spirit who gives us the power to put it to death. So how do we do that? Galatians 5, 16, but I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So we have to learn what it means to walk by the Spirit, which is a huge part of what my ministry is all about, is helping people learn how to walk by the Spirit. And Romans 13, 14, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. So if you are singing about this stuff, you're watching this stuff, you're engaging with this stuff, that is what you think about. So you can't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires, but clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord. And this is like a lost art for Christians, I think, is learning how to get in the presence of God. Um, a lot of Christians will, will sing praise and they'll sing worship, but they never actually engage with the presence of God because it has just become like a routine. So that's, that's dangerous as well. We have to learn how to clothe ourselves with the presence of Jesus. So let me leave you with this tough message. You cannot be a Taylor Swift fan anymore. And I know that hurts. God actually did this to me as I started to grow in him and I started to pursue him passionately and I told him, Lord, I don't want anything in my life that is not of you. I only want what is going to draw me closer to you. And he started showing me things in my life that I needed to cut out. And he actually had me stop listening to my favorite artist, which was Linkin Park. It always has been since I was young. Even as a Christian, they're not a Christian band if you don't know who they are. I, I thought that Linkin Park had helped me through so many rough times. They helped me in my emotional roller coasters that I was always going on in high school and in college. And I thought that they were helping me because they made me feel good. And when the Lord told me to cut them out and stop listening to them, it, it stung for a moment because I was, it was like sentimental to me, right? But what I realized, and it, it didn't last long because I truly desire to only want things that God wants me to have. So if he said to remove it, I'm like, okay, God. And so it, it doesn't hurt anymore. But what I, I realized looking back, it was like, like the veil was, had come off my eyes because I could look back and say, oh my goodness, they weren't actually helping me. Even though they made me feel good in the moment, it was actually 
me feeding myself this music that was perpetuating the cycle of the emotional roller coasters, of the, the deep sadness and longing or whatever it was, the hurt that I was dealing with. It was actually causing me to feel like I was being comforted, but it was a false comfort. And it was like this continual cycle. But I didn't realize it when I was in it. It actually took me going to the Lord and asking him to remove the things that were not good for me for when he decided, when he told me to do that. And I actually hadn't listened to them in a very long time anyways, because I was already drawing away from the things of the world. So it's interesting that he still told me to remove it because it was still on my phone, even though I wasn't listening to it. But you can't be a fan anymore. You can love Taylor Swift as a person. You can admire her creative brilliance of a gift that she has from God. But now that we've established that the dancing and the music and the singing and the messaging is not godly and it comes from the place of the flesh, a place of demonic spirits, from a demon named Karma, you cannot love her art. You cannot be a fan of the art because it doesn't glorify God. And so 1 John 2.15, I'll leave you with this, says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And I know that sounds really harsh, but this is the standard that we should all be striving for because what is interesting is the more that I remove myself from the things of this world, any of my desires, and that doesn't mean that I shut myself up in my house and I'm afraid to go outside and I don't want to talk to anybody who isn't a Christian. Actually, it's the opposite. The more that God has taken the desire for the world out of me because I started engaging in prayer and pursuing his presence and desiring only him, the more that I desired only him, the more that he removed the world, actually, the more love and compassion he put in me for the people in this world who are trapped, who need deliverance, who need healing, who need to be set free because they're trapped in the sins that cause the sickness and depression and disease and anxiety, all the things that they're struggling with, the addictions that come from sin. They are, they are engaged in this stuff. They're engaged in the sensuality. They're engaged in the karma, in the witchcraft, in the manipulation, in the rejoicing over their enemies falling, in the vengeance. They're engaged in all of the sins that are killing them. We can't reach the world and allow the Holy Spirit to rescue them through us from the things that are killing them if we are contaminated with the same things that are killing them and it's in us, we can't do it. We have to be clean vessels. So I pray that you, that you receive this message. I pray that the Holy Spirit has opened your eyes to how, and this message can be applied to so many different things. It's not just Taylor Swift. It's not just music, although that is, that is a huge thing in our culture and it needs to be addressed. But there are other things as well. And so I pray that you will take this message and apply it to your life by asking the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, is there anything in my life that I am blinded to that is not of you and it's not helping me? It's actually hurting me. I pray that you would open my eyes and reveal it so that I can cut it out and have nothing to do with it anymore so that I can receive more compassion from you for the hurting people of this world. I love you all and I'll see you in the next video.